let's get started talking about 3D experience data management or cloud data management. This is a, a fundamental, easy level of data management that anyone using SolidWorks should know about as your first level of protection of your data and revision control. My name is Philip Morrow. Uh, if you haven't heard my voice yet, check out our YouTube channel. Give us a call on tech support. I'm one of the applications experts here at MLC. I specialize in the simulation tool set as well as the 3D experience tool set where you can find even more advanced uh, FEA and simulation tools than we have inside of SolidWorks. And I've been doing this for, for quite a while. I've been here at uh, MLC over nine years. Got a chance to see a lot of different businesses and the way they deal with their data, the way they protect it, control who has access to it, and do some really fundamental things with revisions. And that's what I want to talk about today in the easiest way with cloud data management, a plug and play kind of out of the box tool. Now this is a very simple tool. It's maybe simpler to get into and use than higher level PDM like SolidWorks PDM Standard, Professional, or Manage. Um, but it does still take some know-how, some interface, so MLC is here to help with that stuff. You know, obviously for all these softwares, we offer tech support, training, custom special projects, especially on the simulation side, but we do implementations for all of our data management tools as well. So when you're getting into this, Although you can hit the ground running, let us help you get started as efficiently as possible. Today I'm going to talk about when you're getting started, how to get up and running quick, and what tools to know about. So the first thing we're going to look at is simply how do we connect SolidWorks up to the cloud. It's the same SolidWorks we're using. How do we get our files from there in a 3D experience? What does it look like inside of SolidWorks? Second thing, I want to give you an overview of the tools available to you in this fundamental box. Uh, there's quite a lot of them. There's some of them that you're going to use every day. There's some that you might get into down the road. So I'll show you the fundamental ones first with a nice example of everyday data management. The tools that if even if you're a single SOLIDWORKS user, this is what you need to know about. And then you can build up from there in this same licensing, the same tool set, and get into more formal or complex approval workflows. So let's start at the beginning then, though, with uh, connecting SOLIDWORKS to the cloud. I'm going to show you what that looks like for me. So if I flip over to a web browser, I'm just starting at SOLIDWORKS.com. Same place I usually start if I'm going to go to the customer portal or my SOLIDWORKS. In the top right-hand corner here is a profile button, and there's actually a login for the 3D Experience platform right here. Now, this assumes that you've already purchased, you've got your original emails to get set up, your admin has logged in, they've assigned you a license, and that sends you the email, an invite email. Maybe uh, you are the admin and the sole user. Hopefully you've done this process with MLC. We've helped you get there. So now you're a SOLIDWORKS user, and we're just logging in to our platform. Now, of course, you get a lot of uh, getting started videos to explain this new interface. And in fact, when you log in for the first time, you're going to see some pre-configured dashboards. That's the layout on my screen here of the different apps you want to use. Mine is totally customized. And I hope this is something we help you with as well, getting off the ground. I've got my working folders on a tab. I've got a tab that I use just for looking at bill of materials, the 3D representation of it, the structure of my products on one side. I've got a comparison tool where I can look at Rev A versus Rev B, everything that's changed from properties to uh, um, geometric compare. But all this stuff is a customized layout that we want to help you with. Now, when it comes to connecting your SOLIDWORKS to it, no matter what your dashboard layout here in the middle of the screen looks like, you can click on this compass in the top left, which is essentially the start menu uh, for, for uh, 3D experience. You can find all your apps under here. I've got a great number of roles under here, and I've got some favorite apps. One of them is called Design with SolidWorks. If this is the very first time you're in here, when you click on Design with SolidWorks, it's simply going to prompt you to install. That's it. Just follow the prompts, install the software. If we're working together, I'll make sure you get it installed. Once it's installed, you just click on it, and it actually launches SolidWorks on your computer, the SolidWorks you're already using. It's actually nice to launch it this way, too, because it's going to take care of your login, everything's going to be connected, and it's going to turn on the 3D Experience add-in, which is what we'll be using inside of SOLIDWORKS. So yes, you can create a desktop shortcut, you can launch SOLIDWORKS as normal, but I think when you start working with this uh, platform, you'll find the best thing to do is actually log in, 
click on that compass start menu, click on design with SOLIDWORKS to launch SOLIDWORKS on your computer. Okay, so SOLIDWORKS has opened up from there and popped up on my screen. And notice on the right side of SOLIDWORKS, I have a My Session app. This is the new item for connecting to 3D Experience. Um, it is an add-in, so automatically here, the 3D Experience add-in was checked on uh, as I launched this. And I'm just going to open up something uh, from my recent documents here. If you've ever seen a SOLIDWORKS PDM or a video of PDM, it's going to look very familiar to that. Everything we need to know is happening in this My Session app about this file. So when I want to save this up into my 3D experience, I simply right click over here and choose to save it. That is going to push it up to the cloud environment. And from then on, that's where I'm going to work with it. So you've seen what it takes to connect SOLIDWORKS to 3D experience. If you're doing just data management or uh, simulation, if you've used any SOLIDWORKS add-in before, it's really working the same, just on the right side of SOLIDWORKS. Now let's take a look at the tools of the trade. And for those of you who like to know about all the licensing and, and heavy jargon for this, really we're dealing with three licenses here that your admin uh, gave you an invitation to. The business innovator is just your initial login, gives you some cool tools. The collaborative industry innovator is actually the role that's doing all the data management. It's powered by Anovia, if you've ever heard of that technology. And then, of course, the add-in that you just saw is called Collaborative Designer for SolidWorks. So let's take a look in the web interface at the available tools. And since we're talking data management, what I'm going to do is go back to my compass in the web interface and just click on my Collaborative Industry Innovator role. And here are all the different apps that come with this rule, all the things you can do for data management. There's quite a lot of them. Some of them are much more useful than others. And essentially, if you decide that you want to use one of these, like the Bookmarks Editor is a real common one. It's like your, your working folders. You just drag them out and drop them somewhere out here in the interface. That's how it gets customized. Now, we're going to help you customize this layout to give you the ones that really are the most useful for everyone's workflow. Uh, but this is how I can start digging through and figuring out what tools uh, are available to me. With that in mind, I highly recommend you check out our article, Key 3D Experience Apps for SOLIDWORKS Users. This is on our website. Um, I'll drop a link to it around here if we can put in the chat or the comments here. Um, and we have these broken up by those roles I just talked about. The industry innovator role is the one that is powered by Anovia and that does your data management. So there's some key ones here that we want to introduce you to, the 3D space where your files actually go, the bookmarks editor where you can organize them into working folders, and the lifecycle app where you can move something from Rev A to Rev B. So you can access your tools from the web interface, from inside of SOLIDWORKS, there's certainly some that we're going to recommend and, and have you customize a dashboard with that you'll use every day. And I think one of the best ways that we could see which tools are going to be best for you is just taking an example look at an everyday workflow. And to do this, we'll drop in on the engineering team that designs the Moto Knee that you can see on the right side of the screen. So over in SOLIDWORKS, the engineering team here is using collaborative tasks. Someone has identified the things that need to change and gone ahead and assigned a task to this designer. In fact, they've also used markups, which are available through the 3D Play app, kind of like eDrawings, but you can, you can view it there in your web browser. And they've identified the component that needs to change. Please replace this, add a new piece of hardware, and they've assigned that task to the designer. Great, we can let people know we're working on that task and get started. And if we're going to make a change here, we ought to use the Relationships app to determine where this part is used. What's it used by and where is it used? What other things could be affected by this change? Well, it's used in the assembly we're looking at. It's used also in a non-sport version, so it would change both of those things. And I can see there's a drawing made of this assembly already as well, so we would see the change show up there. Now I'm happy with this version. I really want to change the things in another version here. Another revision is the correct name for this. So just right click and choose new revision. And we can stay at A and just go from A.1 to A.2. Notice the system is intelligent to know both the assembly and the drawing here should get a different revision. We can leave a revision content. And then the plus sign gives us the feedback that 
a new revision is available. So instead of looking at A.1, let's go ahead and just replace by revision and grab that A.2. This also means we can switch back to the other rev when we need to and basically roll back and see how things looked last week. So now we've got A.2 open. It's time to actually make that change. Let's right click and lock the files which gains right access to us. So everyone else can see who's working on the file. They don't actually open it up and make changes at the exact same time. I've got the right access to replace this component and then search up the hardware we need by anything you know about it. This time just, just searching up the size. This is a deep search to the entire database, all of our files that we have in it. And from the web browser, from the task pane, you can just drag and drop into SolidWorks to get that file open and in place. Great. So the design change is made. If we flip over to the A.2 drawing here, I can see the changes are there as well. The last thing might be a little cleanup or perhaps pieces of custom properties. Here we could assign an engineering item number, but kind of like a part number or a simple counter that's pushed down from the platform. So they all get this additional number on them. Of course, that gets pushed to the parts custom properties themselves and then shows up on the face of the drawing. So we want these properties mapped all the way to the drawing. Now that we're happy with this, let's go ahead and save it and finish it. We'll save it, say those are the final changes. My task is done. We'll even release the lock so other people can work on this. The last step before really done might be just changing the maturity from in work to release. That prevents people from being able to just locking it and making changes to A.2 now. They would need to maybe make another revision or get some kind of manager to come back from release to in work if they need to make a change. Now it's released and the drawing status says so. It automatically says rev A.2 in the corner and released. This was set up ahead of time in the drawing templates. This is something we'd like to help you with your templates as well. So it's just that fast. Additionally, the platform has automatically generated a PDF and attached it to this drawing as well. Something we can set up to automatically happen anytime we release a drawing. Okay, I have to admit I got a little fancy there on everyday data management. You don't have to use things like tasks or markup. Really just work in the task pane, save your files, bump their revision, set them to release when you're done with them. But I know some of you want to see these fancy tools and we can definitely go higher from there taking a look at formal approval workflows for maybe a little bit larger or more complex organization. What you're seeing here is a route template or the route my file needs to take through the approvals in the organization. These can be set up in serial or in parallel. And in parallel, you can make it so that both users are required to approve something or that maybe just one person needs to approve in order for it to move forward. Additionally, this company now uses issues, which is a great way to bring up an idea or a problem that anyone in the company can report, and then it brings it to the attention of engineering. Here we can see there's an idea to reduce the overall weight of the design and improve performance. The related files that could be potentially affected have been added as well, which is both a part and an assembly. And this makes it easy to review what someone has identified as an issue in 3D and really know where the problem is coming from, what the idea is. If we like it, we'll simply move this issue from to do to in work and fire up a change action. Now change actions are like your engineering work order. They're your ECO and everything that was captured inside of that issue is gonna automatically be moved to the change action. We can set our date and priority and go ahead and save this change action because now the engineering team is actually gonna work on it. All of these items from the issue are gonna move immediately over to our change action. So let's take a look at it there. Here we can see who's a member of it. Who initiated the issue is gonna be an informed user. And then whoever created the change action is now the owner and assignee, but we can assign this to someone else to work on and we can add approvals. Here, let's add that route template you saw earlier, which is the formal approval workflow that this company uses for all engineering tasks. We can also see the proposed changes list the different items from the issue, but a change assessment or the relationships app that we looked earlier is just a right click away so we can make sure, hey, if we're making changes, exactly what is gonna be affected by this change, have we captured everything?
In this case, the initial person making the issue didn't capture all the related things, but no problem, we'll just drag and drop from the relations app into that change action, so those are all listed on proposed changes, and then set this change action to in work. So we'll actually start making those changes. Moving this to in work automatically bumped the revision on the different items that are going to change. They just went from A.1 to B.1 without us having to do anything at all. Now over in SolidWorks, we're going to check, click the button that says work under change action. This is going to automatically ch uh, capture the changes we're making and essentially keep a history of things. So through the magic of videoing here, I am reducing the weight of this part. The work is done. All I now need to do is change the maturity of these parts from whether they're private or in work to frozen. Frozen means waiting for approval. So I want everything on the change action, when my work is done, to sit in that frozen or waiting for approval state. And of course, you don't have to go to the web. I can access the change action or anything else from inside of SolidWorks where I can see all the items are frozen. So I'll move the change action itself into that waiting for approval state. Now this automates some things again. It kicks off notifications to all the other important users who are in our approval workflow here, our approval route, so they know they have something to complete. Once it makes it through that workflow, we're just waiting on the final approval, which in this case is myself. We can add a comment, approved, and finally approve this change action. In this case, we have a second level of security as well, prompting us to add our username and password again. This organization likes to make sure the person who's approving is who they say they are at the actual computer, so a second login gives us another layer of security. Notice now the change action is complete. We were notified that, the maturity says completed, and if we look at our files, these changes have been realized and every file was automatically set to released. No longer in approval it's released, and all of this information is captured. Who approved it, what date, what their comments were are now captured in the history of the file from here on out. To close the loop with the person who originally made the issue, let's jump back over to issues where we can see that issue is now moved from in work to in approval. That was automatically done by the completion of the change action, and now we can choose that this issue is fully completed by that change action. Now, while all of these tools are included out of the box in the lowest level of licensing when you connect SOLIDWORKS to 3D Experience, not everyone needs to get into complex or formal approval workflows. This is data management tools for every SOLIDWORKS user. If you want to securely store your files in a place that understands file references, some place that's smarter than SharePoint or Dropbox, this is for you. If you want to be able to work with somebody else from two different office locations, easy. If you want Rev A, Rev B, this is for every SOLIDWORKS user and every team that's working on it. Of course, if you're interested in those formal approval workflows or more complex levels of data management, talk to us about SOLIDWORKS PDM. SOLIDWORKS PDM standard, professional, and all the way up to manage for your larger or more complex data management needs are available as well.